Hello, uh, my name is Jonah Friedman. I'm the product owner of Bifrost, and this is going to be an overview of the looping constructs in Bifrost and how to iterate and loop over a bunch of data. There are, roughly speaking, four ways to do this. Those are these four here, and there are three nodes. Um, and these are in order of, of uh, importance. So the first is auto looping. And this is what happens without an explicit looping node, like for each. Uh, this is just what happens when you plug an array node into a node that deals with single values. Uh, so this is the most common one, the most important one to understand. The second one is for each. That's a parallel loop. So this will allow you to process a bunch of data in parallel. Um, and that's very important because parallel loops are faster than sequential loops because you can take advantage of all of the cores that you have on your machine. Uh, iterate is a sequential loop, and that uh, iterates over your data one element after another. Um, so in anything that you need to maintain your, your loop state as you go through it, like for example, if you wanted to uh, compute the sum of an array, for example, then you would need iterate because you need to keep the state going throughout the loop. You can't just have it do all of the elements in parallel. And then the last one is do while. That's a conditional loop. And this is a loop that will keep going until some condition is met. For example, if you wanted to find the first element in an array that matches uh, some value or something like that. So now I'm going to introduce my setup here. And I'm not going to go over this in too much detail right now, because it's just kind of the plumbing of this. Um, but I have a plane being read in here. That's this plane right here. And then it's coming out over here on this end. Uh, that's this BIF shape. And uh, in here, the color is being set, and a dump object is going as well. So if I plug any data in here, for example, the point position, and I click over here, then my data refreshes. Uh, and I can see my data both visually and in text form. So now that that's out of the way, I'm going to demonstrate uh, doing some processing on this data here. So we have the point positions. Those are positions. And then they're being passed to there. Um, and let's say we want the length of this data. So I'm going to type in length here into my tab search and hit Enter to create the node. Uh, and the thing to notice here is that the type of this uh, is array of math float 3. So it says down there in the info bar, uh, array of math float 3. And this is a single float 3. And what it outputs is the length of the vector. Um, that's going to be the di distance from the origin uh, for a position. And uh, that's a float. So this is not an array of float, and this is not an array of float 3. And another way that you can tell this visually is uh, by looking at these port icons. This one is shaped like a hat, and this one is not. And the hat means that this is an array. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. And we can see that these ports here became uh, hats. And this is all it takes to do auto looping. So I'm going to plug that in now, update this. And we're getting the positions here. Those are being passed to the length there. And then this, uh, this, this length node has been auto looped. So, so now this is doing the length on the entire array of uh, vectors and putting out an array of lengths. And those are these values here. Uh, this is equivalent to a for each node, by the way. So let me show doing exactly the same thing with a for each node. I'm going to create that. And I'm going to plug this in. So I plugged in my positions here. And the, we've got these max iterations here. And this limits how many elements this node will work on. And by default, we have one of these. But we don't actually need it in a lot of cases. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this port here. So uh, there we go. And we also don't need the current index. Um, I'll leave that for the moment. So on the inside, I've got these positions. And I can, uh, I can go into here and set these as an iteration target. So when I say true here, this has now changed from a array on the inside of this loop to a single value. So I'm going to change that back. So now this is that, that hat icon. And it says it's an array of float 3. I set it to an iteration target, and now it's just a single float 3. So what this means is this loop will now iterate over the iteration target. If I plug this into the output, I get positions 1 here. I'm going to rename this to out positions. Go back outside. And now we have uh, arrays on the outside and hats, as you can see, with the iteration target logo or icon. 
and then on the inside we have single values. And what I can do inside here is I can take a length, I can do this, I can plug that in, and I get another iteration target here. I can rename that length. I don't need the position support, so I right clicked and deleted it. And now I can plug that in and I get the same result. And these two graphs here are really equivalent. Um, this one is an explicit loop and this one is just the auto looping uh, context. If I want to set up an iterate node to do the same thing, the process is largely the same. So here we go. I'm going to plug that in, delete the max iteration support again. Uh, I can delete the current index, but it's not hurting anything, so I'll leave it. And set this port here to an iteration target. Get the length. So when I plug this output out into the output, and I'll rename this length. And I go up one level. We can see this node is now in error. Uh, the length, the, the outputs of a loop port on iterate have some more options than for each. So it did not automatically become an iteration target. I can make it into an iteration target. So now that I've set this up, this iterate node here is largely equivalent or completely equivalent to the results of these two nodes. So it's just a loop over the data, computing the length of each element, producing an array of the lengths. So let's talk about something that an iterate node can do that the other two cannot. And that's going to be state ports. And state ports are for if you want data that gets modified each time through the loop. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new input and an output by dragging the plus to the plus there. I'm going to set the type of these ports to be float on both ends. and I'm going to uh, go to uh, right click on them and say set port state and then tag one to the other. So on port, uh, I can tag port one over here or I can click right click on port one and then tag port. And now they get their little uh, um, state port logo here, uh, icon, and this is now going to be a uh, loop state. So if I create an add node now and I plug this in here, and here, like this. This means that each time through the loop, it gets the next position in the array, computes the length, and then adds it to this port. So what this is doing is it's computing the sum of all of these lengths here. And I'm going to rename my state ports here to be sum on this end and out sum, just so that's clear. So if I go ahead and plug this in, goes white and I can click here to update the data again and we see the, the sum of all of these values. So the state port is something that you can do in a uh, iterate node but you can't do it in a for each node. And the reason for that is that the iterate node operates sequentially as we said before uh, meaning that a process is one element at a time. Um, because we need to modify the previous loop state if you're doing everything in parallel then there's no previous loop state to get. So that's the reason for the limitation on the for each node. The last uh, looping node that I want to talk about is the do while node. And that looping construct is used less commonly than the other ones, but it's still an important one. And it's also quite a bit different from the other ones. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do this with lengths again. Um, but the first thing that I'm going to do is actually just uh, take this length node here. Uh, if you recall, this is the node that takes an array of uh, vectors and outputs an array of lengths and just plug that right in like that. And on the do while node we don't actually have iteration targets. So I'm going to need to do this slightly manually and I'm going to need to get an array size and I'm going to plug that in like this. So uh, array size to max iterations means uh, loop a maximum of this number of times. And I can actually delete this port and make this loop indefinitely, but unless you definitely know that your loop is going to end, um, I wouldn't recommend it with do while, because there's no iteration targets to do it for you. Instead, this loop here is controlled by this looping condition. So uh, before we go ahead and look at this loop, I'm going to plug this data back in here and 
click over here, and just to look at our data because we want to loop until some kind of condition is met. So this looks like a pretty good condition right here. And this is uh, the center point here, the length of that is zero because it's at the origin. It's also this black one over here. So uh, what we want is we want to loop until we find, say, a very small value. Um, so I'm going to go inside here. And this is not an iteration target, so this is an array. So we need to make this into a single value first. So I'm going to do a get from array. And I'm going to get the current index out. So the first time through the loop, this will give us index 0, then index 1, you know, etc. cetera. Uh, and these are already the lengths. So I'm going to go ahead and say less than. And I'm going to plug this in. So less than 0 0.001. Uh, is going to be the condition to stop the loop. Um, this, however, is the condition to continue the loop. So if I plug this in like this, then this is going to stop at the first iteration. Uh, so I can demonstrate that, actually, by taking the current index and plugging it here. And I'm going to call this last index. And now I'm going to go ahead and get a, uh, a two float node, plug that in, and then plug this in. Uh, that goes black, and we can see that it's zero. So the we can also do this in the watch point. So the last index there was uh, zero. We can see that last value. Uh, and the reason was is because on the very first element, it said, is it less than 0 0.001? No? Okay, then stop looping. So what we need here is a not, just to, just to uh, switch this around. So now that I do this, it says 12. And if we recall, then these lengths that we were computing, I can also do that from here, but we know that these are all producing the same values. These lengths we're producing, so this value here is index 12. And just to demonstrate that, I'm going to select all of these uh, uh, commas here until we get there and go back and you know select some of the values and we see that we have you know 13 regions selected here um, index 12 is going to be the 13th element because we start counting from zero so zero one two three etc okay uh, so where were we we were looking at uh, where this ended so now we have a loop that goes through and um, will find a value that's less than some threshold, for example. Um, I can go ahead and embellish this a little bit. So we're going to, instead of calling this last index, because the last index through the loop, but this is also the found index. And I can also say found value. And I can plug in this value right here. And I'm going to call this found. So these get set each time through the loop, and then when it ends, these are all set to whatever they were the last time through the loop. So, so if this ends, and it is in fact less than this, then that means that we found our value that we were looking for. So if I go ahead and plug uh, this guy in, um, it's, it's converting a boolean to float here. So uh, one means found, uh, false means you know didn't. Um, and if I want to make a value that wasn't found, I can you know, make this into a negative number. Now it was not found, so this is returning a zero. And found index, though, will oops, will be the, uh, the last index in there. And found value will be the last value in there. So if you wanted to use the result of this, uh, which is trying to find a value that matches certain criteria that you can program in here, then you should make sure to actually use the found uh, Boolean value to test whether you found anything at all, because otherwise you get the last value. So I hope that was useful to you. And next up is going to be more advanced uses of auto looping, uh, because in a lot of cases you really don't need these explicit loops uh, at all. Thank you.